Hi, this is Ellie Drew, your clairvoyant researcher. Today I'm going to share with you the I Am Love poem. But first I want to tell you where this poem came from. It was in 2012 when I got a call that one of my good friends was in home hospice. Her family was Taiwanese and it was part of the Taiwanese community that I was teaching over in California quite a few years before that. And the Chinese and the Taiwanese are very private when they have something going on in their life. And so it was really a great honor for them to contact me at all. It turns out that I was contacted the night before I was actually leaving on an airplane to go work with some scientists I work with out in California. And I was leaving the next morning to go to Los Angeles. And so of course, my schedule changed and I immediately went over to their house. And as I was laying with this woman, her name, her spiritual name is Mindrel. When I was laying with her in bed, as she was laying there dying, she had deep spiritual questions that she wanted to know. She had been a devout Tibetan Buddhist. She worked with an Indian guru. This woman spent much of her life and much of her fortune supporting monasteries and spiritual teachers. But when it really counted, when she was at the end of her life, she was afraid. And it's normal. Remember, we are a hybrid species of a soul and a biological vehicle. And the survival instinct of the biological vehicle very much struggles with not wanting to die because its prime directive is survival. So that's why it fights so hard to survive. But she wasn't at peace in her heart, and that really bothered her. And so she had many questions that she asked me. She felt guilty that at the end she felt like she needed to have chicken broth or some meat, and so she felt guilty about that because she wasn't vegetarian, other kinds of questions. And each time, I would not put my personal spin on it. I would just say, what, see what the spirits have to say about this. And I would sink in and I would get answers for her. It turns out that I was wanting to gift this woman something that could help her. If she wasn't at peace at this last of her life, I wanted to be able to have something that would help her on her way. And so I ended up staying overnight at their house. And all night long, I did a vigil for her. And I was praying, give me anything. Give me something that will help this woman come to peace. And all night long in my prayers, I began to hear these phrases coming through. And they just started to repeat themselves. And by 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, I grabbed my computer. I wrote the phrases out. They arranged themselves perfectly in order. Thus, the I Am Love poem was born. And I want to read that to you now, because this is a really essential part of who we truly are. I am love. I am love, a drop from the eternal ocean. I come from love. I return to love. I am love. My drop of love catches a ride on a spark of light. I come to experience, to create in this playground of God. The light, my container, a powerful tool, a body with thought and feeling, allows me Earth's precious experience. My drop resides in the center of light, with my heart the only true teacher. I am love riding the light until it fades. Lost in the trappings of the mind, attached to the illusions of experience, I sometimes forget I am love's perfection. But when I leave this experience of riding the light, I return to love's embrace, to remember I have always been love. I release the illusion of imperfection, for I am love. I come from love. I return to love. I am love.
When this poem was complete, I knew to put it to music that I had created with these three sounds that I knew were healing sounds. And I read it in a very soft voice three times. And we repeated this over and over. And her husband and her, da and, and her daughter, they just cried when they heard it. And we knew that it was a universal teaching. It was played by her bed for the next 48 hours, 24 hours a day, so that it could really get embedded and imprinted into her consciousness. And then for the next two weeks, it was part of the spiritual teachings that she had cycling around in audio that was right beside her bed when she was awake or sleeping. These beautiful energies and teachings would be going into her subconscious mind. Then I got a little bit of a surprise. I got a call from her husband who told me that Mindrel has made a request that when she takes her last breath, she is to call, or that Wayne, her husband, was to call, and we thought, and he thought, it would be the Indian guru, or one of the Tibetan Rinpoches that she was close to and had worked with. No. When I take my last breath, she said, I want you to call Ellie, because she knew I could enter journey. My partner and I, happened to be in Sedona, Arizona, traveling as we were house hunting for some place special to live, our magical house, when I got the call about five or six o'clock in the morning. And her husband called and he let me know that she had taken her last breath and I said, okay, got it, going in, and hung up. Because he knew life is eternal. And immediately I went, I sat on the couch, and I was in for nearly exactly one hour. And this is some of the things that happened. First, she was waiting for me, and the world that she was in was very blue, beautiful blue. But she was waiting for me, and she was asking me, have I done the forgiveness? Have I released all the vows and promises? I want to do it one more time just to make sure. And so right there at the entrance of her death, we did the forgiveness ceremony again with the three forgivenesses. First, forgiving herself. Second, asking others to forgive her. And third, giving others forgiveness. She wanted to go through releasing any vows and promises that no longer served her. And so I did that with her. And then we wanted to make sure that nobody was attached and hooked to her. Because you remember Jesus, the last thing that he gave us as a teaching was, I forgive them for they know not what they do. So she was wanting to make sure before she moved on any further that she was completely detached from human life. The mother, her mother, had a very strong golden cord attached to her. And so we had to make sure that we unhooked that out of Mindrel's energy field and we hooked her directly into source. The husband and the daughter, they just had well wishes for her that she would have a good journey. And so we moved on and we found ourselves floating over a landscape that down below we saw a desk and there was a big line going past that, uh, going up to that desk. And I said, don't worry, we don't need to go here. And then we started moving vertically. It was very much a very horizontal at first and then we started moving vertically. And I can't remember everything that we experienced as we went up, but I'll try to remember some of the key points that I do remember. One of the points was that she had to stop and leave her travel body behind, that she had only gone to a certain point, but if you want to travel farther than that, if your consciousness is higher than that, then you need to start dropping and shedding off like snakeskins, these lower frequency travel bodies that you have. So when we got to a place to do that, that was pretty interesting. We were guided to, to give gratitude for that travel body. And then she sloughed it off and just like a rubber chicken, it fell to the side. And then we were able to move again and we continued to mo move hor vertically. Then we ended up getting to a place where I could feel, palpably feel her excitement. And it was, again, a blue land, the hills, rolling hills as far as I could see them. 
and they were covered in bronze or gold statues that were maybe 12, 15 feet high, 9 feet high, various sizes. And she, in her impression to me, was so excited, like, I made it. I made it to the place of the masters or where I'm supposed to be. And I'm looking around astonished, going, this is still form. Anything that is form is made of light. And remember I told you earlier on, your truest form has no light. It is no form at all. It is pure conscious awareness with an impressionable intensity, an incredible intensity to create and to experience. That is your truest self. So I knew that this was not the right place for her to be. And when I turned my consciousness around, where was Mindral? She was gone, but in her place was one of these statues. And so I started beating on it and knocking on it saying, I will not leave you in this place. And I had to create an energetic Salzol and bzzz, and I cut it open and I took big hammers and I bashed this thing in and I'm truly bashing through her own consciousness, what she created for herself because of her beliefs. And pretty soon that container dissolved and there she was again. And she was like waking up, like, where was I? What happened? I said, what was it like for you? And she said, all I know is that we were looking out and then I was excited to be here and then I fell asleep. And we were looking out at all the people who have the beliefs that she had and all thought they were in their right place. And she said, one day I will come back here and free them as you have freed me. And then she looked at me and she goes, I, I'm ready to go be with my family now. And we found ourselves back in the master bedroom where her body lay in state. And she felt humbled that she had thought she was so right to go to this particular place from her Tibetan Buddhist religion. And she was so anguished that through her life she practically forcibly brought people and paid for people to get these same teachings that she had. And so she was doing forgiveness work, deep forgiveness work for herself. And what I was seeing was this black shadow oozing out of her. She asked for her husband to forgive her for always being right and for being so forceful in her personality. And she was continuing to ooze this black shadow that was coming out of her. And pretty soon it was all clear. And then she looked across at me and she said, this is all just a mental construct, isn't it? And I nodded and I said, yes, it is. And in that moment, the crystalline structure of her mind dissolved. It looked like tiny, tiny little icicles that all just got ran over and then just dissolved away. And she had this great bursting within her heart that she was truly free as a soul, not locked in any belief. And then in her bedroom, she went over and in their bedroom, they had probably a 10 foot long, beautiful altar, beautiful ceremonial objects on this altar, beautiful painted tonkas above it. And she went over to the whole thing and she violently swept it all off and threw it on the floor. And she, with the intensity of destroy your beliefs, destroy your attachments to your beliefs, because it was her attachment to her belief that put her into one of the heavens. And the heavens are the mental realms. Any belief that you have locks you or ties you to that frequency. 
I have Christian friends that were caught up into all the whole rapture movement in the early 2000s or somewhere in there. And it's like, that didn't make any sense to me, but it was very meaningful to them. And they said, we want you to go to heaven with us. And I remember putting my arms around them and saying, hello, my little alien friends. I will come and visit you in your heaven, but I'm not staying there. You have the freedom when you transfer to the other side that if you understand that anything that you see that is form is light and it has been constructed with the power of our co-creative intention and powers. You want to be very careful what you believe. Two days after Mindrel died, she came to me and I had just sat down in my chair and all of a sudden I centered in because I could feel that there was somebody around and my teeth were chattering and, and all of a sudden her, her hands are on my shoulders and she's right here two inches from my face. Ellie! <laughs> it's like, okay, girlfriend, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Back off here a little bit. And she said, Ellie, I want you to have the I Am Love poem translated into all the world's languages. It is truly the universal teaching. Have it with a background of blue in gold letters with a gold frame. And we made this announcement at her Memorial Day service. And within 26 hours, we had the first translation in Hebrew. We had within about 30 days, about 30 translations from around the world. On my old website, it had been posted. We're looking to create its own website, IamLovePoem.com. I was also guided to make 70,000 copies of these because of a donation that came in to my nonprofit, the Institute for Conscious Change. And we made these 70 copies, and her husband said, send them to me, and I will ship them out. And people order these to hand out now for memorial services. They hand them out at church services. They hand them out at conferences. And I encourage people to always hand out three. Keep one for yourself and pass two on to someone else. You can get these for free. We are reprinting them again. There's also 35,000 of them in China because it got one of the last things that Mindrel did before she died. Literally, this is what this woman was doing within three days of her physical death. She was translating the I Am Love poem into Chinese. So we have this poem out and around the world right now. It's actually time for me to go back to print. And we're going to make a whole lot more. So if you want these, we will have contact information for how to get these. And of course, we always accept donations to help pay for the cost on these. But we want to be able to send these out for free anywhere in the world. And so that is the story of the I Am Love poem. When Mindrel came to me two days after she physically died, she also said to me that she was going back now to that place where all those Tibetan Buddhist statues were, where people had fallen asleep. And after that, every two months, she would come back to me, and I would be seeing a vision of what she was seeing as more and more people got freed. And then she came back one time, and as far as I could see, all the rolling hills were cleared so quickly. And I said, what happened? And she said, as people became free in their consciousness and they were able to be free from their beliefs, they became free and we all started being part of the process to free the others. Now we know that people get caught up in their beliefs because Bob Monroe also saw this as Christians laying out on the other side in a dimension. And they were being watched over by these beings of light. And he said, who are these people? And they said, well, these are Christians waiting for the second coming of Christ. And he said, we, why don't you wake them up? And they said, we try to wake them up, but they go, are you the Christ? Are you Jesus? And we say, no. And then they say, well, you must be the devil then. And then they just slide right back into their unconsciousness again. 
When you go to the other side, you don't want to necessarily get caught up in your beliefs so that you get locked there, but you might want to go visit your friends and families that might be locked in these heavens. And there's various heavens. There's other people who don't know that they've died. I've had many experiences of that. But what Mindrel said to me about the I Am Love poem is that it was so universal that this is the one thing to have on your altar. She said, have it with a candle that represents your physical body is like a candle and then pretty soon the candle burns down and you leave this candle, you leave the light. You are a drop riding in the light of your body, your host body. Have a plant because a plant you have to care, care for it, take care of it. Just like you have to take care of business here on physical earth in this 3D reality. Keep it simple. I have a beautiful picture of a little five-year-old Chinese boy on his knees with his hands in prayer position reading the I Am Love poem in Chinese. It is so beautiful to me that this universal teaching can come through now and I share it with you. So enjoy the I Am Love poem and make it part of your life and your meditations. I have received many emails since this has been out of how it is literally transformed and changed people in a positive, beneficial way. I think that's all we have for this section. So many blessings to you. This is Ellie Drew, your clairvoyant researcher. Bye-bye.